Okay, showing the disassembly. Uh, normally what would be here would be your potentiometer. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it. It's long gone. But it, the wire would come around and it would plug into here. So we're just going to go ahead and remove that wire, which would be your silver potentiometer. We're also going to remove this ribbing connector. Slowly, just work it back and forth, pop it out. Uh, this has some tape on it, which I'll explain later. Then basically we're just going to be able to lift our our grip right out. Okay, with that, just to get it out of the way for testing, we're going to remove our friction adjustment. Okay, installation of the kit is pretty simple. We're going to have one screw on here, and this what this little device does is this prevents the uh, lateral movement or locks in the lateral movement of the of the stick itself. And what we're going to do is to get it out, we're just going to push it slightly, and you'll see it'll slide right out. It doesn't require a lot of flexing. Again, it slides in, slides out. So the tension is actually taken up by this being wedged, not by the um, uh, not by the screw. Okay, now we're going to remove one of the alignment tabs, and we're going to drop in our new magnetic sensor. Okay, we're going to we're going to place it in position with the magnets facing towards the handle. Again, the magnets facing towards the handle. Okay, and don't worry about the orientation of it. We can mess with that later. We're going to put on our bushing, and again followed by our lateral movement tab. We're just going to slide it right on there, and that's a pretty small screw. Get that started. And now we're going to screw that into position. And we don't want to over tighten too much, it's just plastic, it'll strip right out. Um, the screw's not really holding anything but holding it in place, it's the the um, the fact that it's locked into the plastic that is that hold that's holding it. Alright, now we can just put we can put this aside for the moment and we're gonna screw in our new sensor assembly. Now we'll have need the 2.5 millimeter um, hex for this. There'll be two screws that you'll remove, that'll be here. And then the assembly will come with the new screws. And you're just going to drop it right into place. I'm doing this on my lap. Um, on the bench I actually have a little setup to hold this, but if you're just doing it once, the lap works pretty good. Alright, so we're going to screw the sensor in. This is going into metal, so you could snug it up a little bit. Don't need to go crazy. Alright, so we have our hall sensor here. We have a capacitor, which is just recommended by the factory. Our board, and then the new wire that's just going to plug in. I like to bring it all the way around the board because this wire is a little bit, a little bit long, and it just keeps it out of the way. So we'll bring it around the board. Also like to bring it under the current wire. And then once we're through there, we're just gonna plug it right in. Now all unfortunately you probably just see a lot of my hands, but you can see where it plugs in. So basically the wire just goes around and plugs in. And then we can fix it up to ensure it's not in the way of anything. Alright, so now there's our sensor. It's plugged in. But this, this is where it gets a little tricky. This is why it's on our lap, because we, we have to drop the handle down. And then basically what we're going to do is we're just going to align our bushings. Sometimes it goes smoother than others. Make sure our, our sensor is actually pushed over far enough. 
All right, and here you can see how these go in. Okay, the long, the tab that's on the bushings actually transitions from the top to the bottom, from the top to the bottom, so it should have a little square at the top, and then a rounded portion. Now I have the tape here. There is enough clearance, the things are kind of tight here, but there is enough clearance, uh, so it should not bind, but just to be sure, I just took the tape, a couple rows of electrical tape around this. Now this connector actually is too large for the pins. We want to make sure, you can see that the right two pins have nothing in them, so it's important that as we install this, we install it all the way to the side with the pins. Otherwise, you'll put it together and your buttons won't work. Alright, so there we have the basics, but we're not going to screw the top on yet because we still have a critical adjustment to make with the magnets themselves. You can see how this is free to slide. This is where we're going to use our 3 seconds uh, Allen wrench, which is going to lock this in. And we're not going to use a lot of pressure. Right now, we're just going to move it until we feel a little pressure and then back it off so we can still move this freely. Okay, the initial adjustment is going to be we're going to pull the stick all the way back and then just push this all the way down. You want it very close to the, if just about touching the sensor board itself. Sometimes I like to put a credit card in there. Alright, once that's done we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring up our Windows, our Windows um, joystick calibration and we're going to do a combination of two things. We're going to be moving this to get our zero and when, when I'm talking about it because I can only show one at a time I'll be talking about sliding this back and forth and you'll see as I talk through that I'll be showing the screen moving. Basically at this point you can see this is loose enough to slide it back and forth. I'm going to make sure I'm all the way in the idle position. I want to make sure that the I've got just a little bit of play where my sensor between my uh, magnetic sensor and the board is and I'll, I'll be able to slide this back and forth now I'm starting with the zero so what I'm gonna do is you can see I'm set on idle but I'm able to move this back and forth to change the joystick the most critical number here is the one that says Z um, the Z axis and it's giving us our 8-bit resolution and we get that by clicking the display raw data in case you haven't done that we want to get that all the way down to zero. So we're going to move our just we're going to move our magnetic sensor, excuse me, just so we get to zero. All right, and then we're just going to go a tiny bit past it just to make sure we always get there. Once we do that, we can go ahead and tighten it with a set screw. Okay, and we're not going to go too tight because, again, we are just going into plastic. I want to make sure I have just a little bit of clearance here, which I do. Clearance here between the magnetic sensor and the board. Now we're going to go back up to our screen. We're starting at zero, and we want to make sure that we get to 255. Okay, I popped up a little bit there, and... There we go. And there's our 255, and we have a little bit of bit of play past it. So we're all set. We're uh, we've made our adjustments. Basically, we're concerned about the left and right, making sure we're not, you know, rubbing on the sensor or rubbing on the the board. If you can't get there, and maybe in shipping the sensor might have gotten moved a little bit, you can just move it out or in a little bit with your finger, and that will change the setting. So just be aware of that. The closer it is. The, um, uh, the stronger the magnetic field. But once that's adjusted, we're done. And we can go ahead, and now at this point, we can go ahead and, just so we're not, it's not in the way, we can go ahead and put our brake position in, our, not our brake position, but our friction in, and reassemble it.